you have a collect call from an inmate at Coleman Correctional Facility. This is Steve Madden. So tell me what you know about Steve Madden, the actual guy. Shoes. Shoes. The shoe guy. Those funny fashion ads of the big heads and the big shoes. He was in that movie, Wolf of Wall Street. Steve Madden. <laughs> Let's start. To my family, being creative was being able to fix a television. So in an effort to straighten me out, my dad said I had to go to work. So I got a job in a shoe store. This is where I learned the shoe business. I used to work here. A girl would come in, and you were part of designing their lifestyle and their wardrobe. This is cute, too, Fire. And I got obsessed with shoes. I quit one day, put $1,100 in the bank, and went to work in my own business. I knew that I had to come up with a hit. Made a shoe that was for a market that wasn't being served. We called it the Mary Lou. It was truly young fashion. Got this call from my childhood pal. Danny said, we're looking for companies to raise money for. He said he's got this genius behind his company named Jordan. Jordan Belfort. Jordan Belfort, the wolf of Wall Street. We'll raise you the money you need to build a business. I became part of the scheme, because I didn't care about anything but building the business. And then the whole thing came crashing down. And there was nothing I could do at that point. Did some sort of neurotic drive. Here's what we're doing. My work and my life are one. You can't separate them. It was an older industry. We disrupted it. My greatest fear was going to prison. The ball dropped. The rural stops. You can't run a business from prison. Mackerel was the currency. Mackerel, fish, that was the currency. I became the mackerel king. He wasn't like a weekend warrior. He'd be face down a lot of places. He was a full-time barbarian. That's the guy I want to hang out with. Oi, oi, oi. Our sales started plummeting. It was worse than I thought. You blindsided us. When it all costs, there are costs. I'm completely insane. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to AOL's Build Series New York. How's everybody doing today? <laughs> Good. And hello, everybody watching at home. We are here with the legendary Mr. Steve Madden, who is the subject of a new documentary, Madman, the story of Steve Madden. Welcome. Yes, it's good to be here. Yes. <laughs> everybody give it up for Steve one more time. Yeah. Now, the documentary opens with the cameraman walking down the street and saying, who's Steve Madden? Yeah. Who is he? Are you, were you surprised at all that people knew your name but didn't know you? No, I mean, outside of uh, New York or, and even in New York, people still don't know my face. They know that the name is, you know, now become... Ubiquitous. Ubiquitous, yes. <laughs> That's good. I like that word. You can have it. Household name, ubiquitous. But the face is not. I suppose it's a good kind of fame, kind of like an author. I've always said, you know, like your favorite author that sort of you read his books and, and love his work, but you don't know who he really is. And so you can just kind of go anywhere you want without being, you know, mo mobbed or whatever. So why now? I mean, we have other sort of household shoe names in the documentary. We see Aldo and we see Sam Adelman. So why, yeah. why do it now? Well, there was a film, there was a film made. Why, why do it now? Because I'm getting so old. <laughs> so I have to do it quick before it's too late. <laughs> but, um, you know, The Wolf of Wall Street came out. And it was a bit of my story was in it. You know, it was a good movie. And I thought, well, let me just tell my story a little bit. And, and also, while, you know, I'm not that old, I could still remember. You know, it's not like I, you know, You're seven not years that ago, old. you know, we, <laughs> you know, it wasn't that. It, you know, so we could remember, like, what I wore, what I listened to, who I worked with, you know, that kind of thing, you know. And in the documentary, something that really caught my attention was it was a really scrappy start to, to you started with famously with eleven $1 hundred dollars and uh, making everything in a garage where yeah. you now manufacture yeah. in Long Island. Yes. Um, but something that's stuck out to me is you have this incredible team of women around you and you're sort mm -hmm. of you're a personality, you know. Yeah. So you never had an HR department or anything. I'm sort of getting at this like uh, wave of sexual harassment in business and everything yeah. like that. So were there yeah. ever moments where you thought to yourself, ooh, you know. Well, other than the fact that I married a girl that worked for me. Yeah. <laughs> we were trying to make shoes. Yeah. You know, that was the job at that hand. Was the job. Yeah. 
Cool. And you're also really well known for seeing something on the street and having the advantage of manufacturing that trend that you see in Long Island and yeah. putting it out right away to sort of test the market. Yes. Is it harder to do that now with fast fashion everywhere? I mean, you've got Zara that turns things out. Zara's great. Yeah. It's not, it's not harder to do it. It's just that, you know, as your company gets bigger, you know, there's just, it, it, you've got this, it's kind of like you have an elephant instead of a tiger, you know? And so you got to, you can be as big as an elephant, but you got to think you're a tiger. So I try to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very much on that. I love speed to market is still my favorite thing. And I still think kind of small in that regard, but it's a big business. And that's one of the great things about, frankly, me not being the CEO of the company is that I don't have to worry about the actual business stuff as much. Ed Rosenfeld takes care of that and he's brilliant. And, uh, I just kind of like can be a cobbler. And cobbler NYC is his yeah. Instagram and, handle. <laughs> yeah, and kind of push it out, you know, and kind of like say, let's get, let's move on that. You know, we love white boots, you know. Thank you. And, and you're The wearing, Wagner boot, like, yeah. You know, like, let's make white boots. Let's, you know, let's do it. I mean, I can remember being in my store down the block in Soho, my first store in, in, two, in 1993 or 1993, and there was this thing for silver, platform shoes and so we actually took shoes and painted them in the back silver and like that was what we did that's you know that's what you did yeah yeah I uh, I like that <laughs> and I liked it growing up I, like I grew it. up on I enjoy on doing that shoes yeah. yeah so so when you got started your your customer was a younger trendier uh girl and do you, you you know you sourced your inspiration sort of on the streets of New York yeah do you source it all from looking at Instagram now? I mean, that's such yeah, a big... Yeah, Instagram, sure, yes. It is It is uh, not my first sort of thing, but I'm more into it now. Um, actually, I was following it. I, w I was following people that I knew, and I got rid of everybody because it was so boring. They would like take a <laughs> plane ride to like Arizona and get out and take a pose in front of the plane or whatever I was like I can't do this but then you know there were and some of my friends got insulted but you know but I didn't but then I started to there were some people there are brands you know that look great and then I have to say Cardi B you know she's blown my mind with her Instagrams I mean she does these like riffs she gets up and does like a riff on like a purple blanket like one of her did she ever I, get a bath? I know bath? you all must know who she is. She's a <laughs> budding superstar hip hop artist uh, from New York who's used to be a pole dancer. And, uh, but you know, she does like a whole, I don't know if it's her or if the character she's developed, you know, but it's just so much fun to watch. And so it's gotten me more into Instagram. I'm glad that you mentioned Cardi B because you really enjoy working, or it seems that you really enjoy working with a lot of big name music musicians, especially women in pop. Uh, is there anybody who, you know, we've got Lady Gaga, you worked with Katy Perry. Yes, Harry. I did a, uh, Mozart was, I did, Yeah. no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, but it would have been fun, because yeah. he, I liked his wig. <laughs> <laughs> no wig for We you. did, we worked with a lot of people, some we do more, you know, stuff with, like, uh, Keisha Cole, I really liked working with Keisha Cole. I worked with the Kardashians, Kendall and, Kendall and Kylie. Kylie, who are huge. <laughs> they're so big. When I worked with them, they were big, but not like, it's crazy now. They're nice. And I worked with the Olsen twins, who used to be on Full House. And uh, Iggy, did I say Iggy? I worked with Iggy Azalea. Yeah, I worked or, with a lot of people. We work with Madonna. We, we work with everybody, but... But uh, with Cardi, we're just going to kind of stay in an Instagram vibe. Okay. And I don't know if I answered your question. I'm sorry. But well, here's, here's another one. Sometimes I like it, and sometimes <laughs> I don't. He, who? I didn't like working with Iggy. Okay. Why? Because she, she couldn't, you know, she was very talented, and I liked Iggy, and she was very talented. Really, I thought she was very talented. I mean, she's from Australia, and she's doing all this hip-hop stuff, and it was great. But it, she just had difficulty, you know, dealing with her stardom. So it was difficult to work with her because 
she just couldn't get, she was, it was hard to get her to work, you know? Sure, sure. But I, but I liked her. Yeah. Is there anybody with whom you haven't yet worked in music or in fashion who you would really like to work with? Um, I'm working with Cardi B now. Again, doing the Instagram. There's nobody that I would rather be working with more than Cardi. I think she's, first of all, she's adorable. And, you know, she's, you know, she's just exploding. She's intelligent. And, um, you know, it's just great to see so many people like her. They're rooting for her. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so I'm enjoying that. I enjoyed working with her. Great, great. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure she enjoyed working with you and your yeah. company, considering you were recently awarded Company of the Year yeah. at Footwear News Achievement Awards, so congratulations. Yes. Uh, I wanted to ask you a question about a comment you made when you walked up to accept your award. You said, I thought Ivanka Trump was going to be here, but I'm glad she's not. What did you mean, Steve? Well, I was just, I was just trying to be <laughs> silly and... and, and uh, in, fr in front of the audience. Yeah. But she did, I was, you know, a few years ago, she did win some awards for mm -hmm. bags, handbags or something. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, and also why- I'm I was just having fun. <laughs> right. I'm curious too, because you were sort of a big name in the 90s in, in New York, and you were, sort yeah. of, you know, there's a lot of big names in the 90s of New York, one of whom is her dad, who is now dad, the president, yes. you know, go him. figure. Yeah. Miss Universe. Okay. I was a judge. What's that like? I was a judge. Okay. And uh, he came in and said hello. And uh, and yes, I did meet him. And he tried to rent me a store once in um, Trump Tower. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. And you guys lived there at one point, right? One of his apartments? Or? No. no. Oh, yeah. my Yes. But not Trump Tower. Another Trump building. Cool. I wish him well. Yeah. I do. I wish him well. And... Uh, you know, I, I disagree with some of the stuff that he does. Mm -hmm. um, I do. But and I wish he was more sensitive to our uh, less fortunate and the racial stuff, I think, would be more soothing. For well, the country. Yeah, yeah. And I'm glad that you bring, yeah, I mean, you seem like such an emp oops. In particular. <laughs> sure. I, I don't, you know, it's like, because I am rooting for him to do well. We need, to, you know, we're all in the country. But I thought the way that I was particularly upset about the criticism of uh, Colin Kaepernick. Is that how you pronounce that mm -hmm. right? And I, I think that his kneeling is very respectful, frankly. And, uh, you know, and he's, there, there's some injustice. And I think they're, the beauty of the national anthem, I personally believe that, is that we have the right to, dis, you know, that we have the right to express. That's the beauty of America. So if you take that, that's what the national anthem's all about. Now, you know, is, the, is that you have the right. This is not a, like a totalitarian country. And, and you can't, at the foot of a boot, be forced to salute the flag. Because so that's the beauty of it. Now, when I go to the games, I go with my son, and I sing at the top of my lungs just to annoy my son. <laughs> and Because my dad did that with me, and I was so embarrassed. I would go to the football game, and my dad would sing, oh, say, at the top, and I would want to crawl into the chair. <laughs> and so now I do it with my son. But Does he get annoyed, or does he sing along? He gets so annoyed. He pulls at my shirt. Dad. But I just think that uh, that's the beauty of it. We have the right to do that. And then we should just understand it and... and uh, you know, so that's that's one thing. Politics aside, yes. you are a New Yorker through yeah. and through. You grew up on Long Island, one of America's greatest. We say Long cities. Island. Long Island. Long Island. You're gonna t have to teach me that. I'm a Michigan yes, girl you gotta myself. Yes, got to say Long. But, long uh, Island. <laughs> yes. Are there any New York City haunts that you remember fondly going to, or that you go to now, like a pizza spot or a, yeah. a club when you were going? And There's a couple of places. Uh, I loved Astor Place Haircutters. That's that right around the corner. So great, I miss that. And uh, you know, I really liked when I, I, I really, they're still there, Dean and DeLuca. And I always talk about that because I thought, you know, I was young, you know, I started my business, I'm from the island, I'm very unsophisticated. And I would go for lunch and get the brownies at Dean and DeLuca and they were so great. It was so great, and I thought to myself, I've arrived. 
you know, this is what real food tastes like. And I was just so, I thought, this is the great, like it, the brownie was so good. Of course, it's not the same anymore. No? Yeah. Oh, too bad. Well. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see here. What else have we got? So another question um, is that a lot of your footwear uses non-leather products, which makes it uh, really popular, like a go-to, an affordable priced go-to for vegans. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we have that, some vegan followers. Yeah. Was yeah. that a, a personal decision that you made, or is it a business reason? You know, um, no, I'm, to I'm not a vegan. Okay. I'm not a vegan. My niece and nephew are vegans, and I admire vegans very much, and I, I, I really mean it. And I think that it's an evolved place that I hope to get to one day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, I want to head back a little bit and talking about the business a little bit more. And Amazon is overtaking everything, but yeah. Steve Madden shoes are available on yes, of Amazon. course, yes. Um, is that a, just a necessary evil that you have to work with such a big giant in, in the retail space? Well, we have to reach our customers, and Amazon is doing a good job of that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're doing business with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, what other things is, is the Steve Madden name, the, the, you know, are you doing to, to reach new customers? Are you doing anything in store? I mean, I know that the, the uh, Times Square store is doing really well. Yeah, we have a great store in Times Square. We're, you know, we're, you know, looking at the high, you know, I think uh, retail is in, there's, there's, it's still good, you know. The internet is booming, and I think that we're moving to perhaps some sort of hybrid uh, model, perhaps, you know, of retail and the internet together. Somebody smarter than me is going to figure that out. For me, I'm just trying to make cool shoes and, and leave the rest to other people. Yeah, well, uh, I will ask you one more question yeah. about cool shoes and then we'll open it up to the yeah. audience. Mm -hmm. I, well, there was a scene in the documentary that I loved and your team is presenting you with this shoe. It's multicolored and you say, oh God, that's awful. And you know, maybe the language is a little bit more colorful. In it, yeah. But how do you keep your finger on the pulse? How do you, how can you spot a really just bad shoe? Yeah, the, you know, that's, this is what I do for a living, you know. And it's bigger today. It's it's harder for me, um, because I have such great people that I work with. I really do. I, and the, you know, and uh, you know, I trust them. And I sometimes don't like everything. You know, I and uh, it's that's a, you know it's something I have to deal with. Was was I didn't answer that well? No, that's okay. What Here's I'm, a. I'm trying to. What I'm trying to say is. What I'm trying to say inelegantly is that. Um, a, one cannot be self-indulgent all the time. And, uh, and then as one gets older, you know, I don't want to put my sort of taste and value system so much into everything um, because we're so of the moment. Mm -hmm. So I have to figure that, and I, you know, I have to weigh all those things. Yeah. But of course, a good shoe is a good shoe, and it's timeless. Great, great. Yeah. All right. Well, we will open it up now to audience questions. If anybody has any, come on up. Yes. Hi there. Hi. Hi. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, what is the impact and uh, takeaway you want audiences to um, have from this film? I. Uh, good question. You know, I. I, I would say that. Um, some 26-year-old kid who's messed up, you know, smart, but, you know, you know, getting in his own way. Um, perhaps you can, you can see that 26 is still very young, or 28 is still young, and there's time to, you know, get with it and fix your life and find something that you love to do and that kind of thing. So I, I'd like to be able to reach people in their 20s, actually. Yeah, honest. and you know, we didn't even touch upon really how deep the story gets into your own life. I mean, it's it's a redemption story, but it's also a comeback, you know, and a success story, but not without its share of challenges. And then you you give back in the end, and you know, you, we see people um, who you had met when you were in prison, and they're now part of your company and yeah. your friends. I, I yeah. assume. Yes. yes. <laughs> so that's uh, that was really touching for yeah. me. Yeah, but watch. it's a, you know the struggle continues. Uh, you know, we're still. One keeps still evolving, and one still makes mistakes mm -hmm. and learns. So I don't want it to be, I'm not into, like, I did this, 
I was so bad and now I'm good. And you know, it's not like that. I don't, I don't want that to, because it doesn't feel real to me, but we're trying. You know, anyway, we're trying. That's all any of us can ever do, yeah, right? Yeah, we try, and you know, we, some things feel good and some things don't, right. you know? Let's see if there's another question. Have we got one from anyone? Hi, I Hi. wanna know, when it's all said and done, what do you want to be said about your brand? And is there anybody that personally inspires you as a designer? You know, I'm inspired by many things. Uh, it's not as always linear with the shoe design, although I admire many uh, shoe designers. I admire, but you know, it's in all art forms. I mean, I love film and, and art and literature and good shoes. Everything can be architecture. Anything can sort of move you, you know, inspire you, put the spirit in you. You know, anything can, I mean, doesn't necessarily, I mean, I, so many things that I like. Do you want me to name a few? Um, Putting you on the spot. Yeah, I think that uh, Gucci is terrific. I think Adidas is terrific, you know? Um, and uh, I liked, I liked a lot what Tom's did I mean, I don't, I'm not really following them now that much, but I sort of admired the giving away of shoes. Um, I don't think it's as popular as it was, but I, I kind of like that. I thought it was cool. And I love, um, I really love haagen ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. We'll ask one more audience question. Hi, Steve. Hi. Um, you seem like you are writing your own legacy, and that's why it's important to, to do this documentary now. Um, you mentioned some brands like Gucci and Adidas. Yeah. Tell me, I mean, I know you get so much praise, and you know, I personally also love your shoes. I think they're affordable and great. How do you feel about your success, and how do you feel about your branding altogether? Oh my God, I feel like I'm in the therapist's office. That's a good question. <laughs> that's a great question. Well. You know, on some days I'm, I'm, I know that we've done well, and then the other days that I just, I think I'm just a beginner. And you know, when I see some other shoes that look better than mine, you know, it makes me insane. And I, I get very competitive again. So, different times. I wish I felt great all the time about that, you know. But, so that's, Sort of, I'm sort of like that. I mean, it's not that I'm like a manic depressive. I'm, I'm not trying to say that, but you know, it's you know, so what? You know, it's just a shoe. You know, there's so many more important things, right? So we're, that's it. But I still want to make great shoes, and I want everybody to wear my shoes. And my fantasy is that there's no other shoe companies in the world <laughs> but mine. And all, <laughs> that's all I want. We'll keep working towards it, yes. and we'll keep following you. So thank you again, Steve, for yeah. being here. And uh, thank you, viewers at home, for watching. And we'll see you guys soon. Thank you. All right. <laughs>